Uh, Mr. Posey, Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wonder if each panelist just give me an, uh, as short an explanation as possible uh, why you think we ended up with you in the crisis. We can start, Ms. Haynes. Uh, I'm not clear on what your question was. Could well, you repeat? Yeah. What do you think the nexus of the crisis was that, that brings your organization into the uh, focus? The, um, the downturn in the markets, of course, has had a negative impact on many, many investors. Um, we are concerned about those investors, that we are an investor protection agency. Um, that has always been our focus. And we're also concerned that investors uh, get full information at the point that they're going to invest, either from their broker or if it's an initial offering from the offering documents, so that they can make an informed investment decision. Um, and in the recent economy, we've seen risks that um, well, certainly have, are, are unusual, and we believe they should be fully disclosed. Well, the, the thing that appears somewhat relevant is obviously the entire crisis was driven by greed uh, from many different angles around the world, uh, and, and it appeared everybody wanted to get more and more competitive with the returns that they got. I mean, it's a natural phenomenon to do, and so people got reckless. Uh, banks got reckless, securities, I mean, investors got reckless, uh, and, and because somebody else did it, it almost seemed okay. You know, like your mother always said, well, if everybody else is jumping off the roof, are you going to go jump off the roof too? Well, we, we all uh, saw a lot of people jumping off the roof. And I know with banks, we've, we've heard some of the experts say this is a one in a hundred year phenomena, just like a big storm, and, and usually so many of these misbehaviors are self-correcting. Uh, people are aware of the new scams. There's a new awareness to look out for this. Uh, it's going to be hard to sell anybody a derivative for any reason, I would suspect, for some time. And, uh, and I'm just wondering if a whole lot of new regulation uh, might be a cure in search of a new disease. And maybe if you could just comment on that. Um, I think that new regulations need to be done very carefully. Uh, to the extent we go forward with them, the Congress gives us additional authority. Uh, unintended consequences are something that we at the Commission worry about whenever we look at a regulation. Um, and also, in particular, with the financial advisors, many of them are small entities. Okay, and thank you. Mr. Watkins, your, your comments? We come to the table because I borrow money for the state for a living right. uh, to finance infrastructure, all of the things that I talked about before. Um, we are the sympathetic victims in all of this crisis. We've done nothing wrong. The state has been ver managed very well financially over the years. Um, so th this causes me two problems. One, my ability to borrow money to fund infrastructure, which is uh, impaired. And secondly, is the cost of funding. Our number one mission is to borrow at the lowest possible cost for infrastructure needs for the state. To the extent that that is impacted, that's obviously of concern to us. So that's how we come to this crisis as, a, as an innocent victim in trying to discharge our responsibilities. Anyone else like to comment? I would simply act, like to add to, to Mr. Watkins, again, when we're looking at largely the enhancement, I want to stress again two points. Number one, what we're looking is simply a short term. We're not looking for something 5, 10, 15 years out. We're only looking at short term to buoy the markets up because the markets have clearly gone away, as Mr. Watkins said, from no reason by the city and the states. That leads to my second point. The second point is we're talking about capital projects going forward. We're not talking about subsidizing budgets that weren't handled. We're not talking about operating shortfalls. We're largely talking about financing infrastructure and major projects going forward. And I think that's what needs to be kept in mind in terms of the policy decisions that we're looking forward. It's one short term, and again, it's not, large, it's not talking about operating budgets. It's talking about capital projects to move forward because we simply do not have a market or we do not have viable options that we used to have on the enhancement side. 
monolines, insurers, et cetera. Yeah, that, that, that's the same basic problems that all the small businesses have out there. I mean, it's, it, the funds are just not available, and, and I don't think that's going to happen no matter what the government does unless and until they come out with a plan and say, this is what you can expect us to do. Here's how you can measure the progress back. I think people are going to set on their money and not spend a dime until they have some degree of certainty that there's going to be a recovery. Uh, everyone is suspecting the worst now, and, and so far we've just seen um, the federal government throw up some Hail Marys and, and hope that they catch them in the end zone, score some points, and turn the economy around, but it doesn't seem to be working very well. Now, I would say anecdotally, and I think we can come up with specific examples, on the municipal bond side, there's a different situation. There are projects that would be ready to move forward if there were enhancements. If you look at a lot of medium pieces uh, of the market, rated A, those sorts of things, if there was an enhancement available, which today isn't, the six players that used to be simply aren't around anymore, if there was enhancement, you would have those projects go forward. And those are a whole array of projects literally across the country. It's, it's the same problem. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen of Kansas. Thank you.